Hi guys, welcome to episode 29 of the daily antivirus edition of Roll with the Fox. I got a question for you. Who's going to tap first? <laughs> can you? <laughs> Alright, you got the answer. So, can, so what we're going to do is um, look for uh, the reasons. So, start answering guys, what is the reason? Write that first. All right, um, guys, we're gonna work today on uh, guillotine defenses. And uh, I yesterday we worked on some counters to guillotine defenses, kind of more against static uh, guillotine defenses. All right, the fact that somebody's static doesn't mean that they're just gonna hold on forever, but also it sort of gives you a chance when somebody's statically defending something, it buys you time to figure out what else can you attack. I'm personally a, a bigger fan of um, sort of uh, active, sort of more mobile defenses. Uh, so we're gonna go over that. But before we do, uh, I wanna address, uh, uh, we got a question uh, from the Academy uh, page from Jared, uh, I believe from Australia, uh, about inversion for a big guy. Um, guys, let me just quickly remind you, we're getting questions from, we have a bunch of accounts. We have two academy accounts. I have my personal account on Facebook. We have a school, Silver Fox BJJ YouTube channel. We're approaching 5,000 subscribers, guys, by the way. Um, and we really never, never sort of, you know, uh, spent a lot of time trying to build up that channel because I've reserved a lot of my sort of time and, and so forth to help, uh, you know, to do sort of collaboration instructionals on the TriStar Gym channel with Firas. Um, we also have an Instagram, one account, Mike, or two? One. Which I'm still learning how to use, so occasionally when I try to go in, I don't know what I'm doing. So the best way to get your questions answered, guys, is underneath in the comment section of this live feed, or YouTube as well, the, uh, you know, sometimes, uh, but if it goes in a lot of different ways, it, the questions do get to me eventually. Uh, but it's better if it's sort of in the comments because then I, I always read them. And also, I don't have to rely on Mike to get these questions back to me. Sometimes it, there may be a delay. Anyways, so let's jump right into it. Inversion for bigger guys. So, guys, one of the things what an inversion allows you to do is a lot of times when he gets through the, through the guard, I have two choices, either accept bottom cross side or kind of overshoot and regain guard. A lot of times, as soon as we regain guard, I'm going into an offensive mode, okay? So it's not just an offensive offensive way. Um, it's a, you know, it's, it allows you to make the guy effectively overshoot. So again, he gets through the guard. Right now, this, he just wants to drop in on me right here because this is where he's going to control me. But if I make him overshoot and try to get my feet in, now I have something going on. I can go straight into an offensive mode. All right? Um, if you're a bigger guy, it's not a question of size. It's a question of mobility. So what I encourage you to do is start to work your mobility. There's sort of a couple of drills you can do. You can practice with your, with your friends or you could practice solo. The first one, the very one of the very most important things for inversion is to make sure you're not inverting on your neck. So if I'm inverting, right now I'm on my neck. If I turn my head, I can come up. If I go the other way, so look, look at my head movement. So basically, all my weight is in my shoulders, so it doesn't hurt my neck. So you have to learn to move your ne neck in the correct way that does not allow you to get stacked, okay? A lot of times I also reinforce my neck with my shoulder, the free shoulder, so in this case it's my left one, in case if something goes awry, so I have sort of additional support. So this is a good good drill to do. You can, you can I'm sure if you YouTube how to practice inversion, there's gonna be a million solo drills. Um, Another sort of interim step to inversion is uh, guard recovery where 
For example, when we go to turtle, so this is not an inversion, but it helps you sort of, you know, kind of with the movement to, to regain guard. And again, as soon as we regain guard, we're going into an offensive mode. So that's a bit of an interim step to learn how to sort of keep changing the angle and sort of slide underneath. And sometimes you will take a bad shot. Enrique sprawls on me. So rather than stay here, I just fold. All right? Once you get more comfortable with inversions and sort of folding underneath your opponent, the next step would be obviously to just kind of start to do inversions, you know, where you attack the legs, sweeps, and so forth. Um, understand that, you know, I'm comfortable with inversions, but my inversions are not as good as, as Enrique's. I'm not as flexible as he is. So a lot of times when we're training, if he sort of starts to stack me, this is where I go, oh crap, okay. So right now, I need to just, just get rid of this. I don't care what happens. I just get rid of this. Yeah, hope well. Okay. This is not how it's necessarily gonna go. If we're going live, yeah. This is more likely my escape and try, just try to recover. On the other hand, if I go, if I do that to Enrique, when he sort of inverts her. <laughs> yeah, this is, yeah, this, this can be troublesome for me. This is, I gotta be, I gotta be careful. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna arm lock you. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, that is my goal, to have him arm lock himself, basically. <laughs> but I'm still working on that. So, the point is, there's a lot of levels to inversions. There's guys that are kind of relatively compact, uh, very flexible, they're gonna invert amazingly. Um, then there's guys that are just not as flexible, you know, maybe if you husky around the midsection, uh, the inversions are gonna be a little more difficult. But I can tell you this, that we have, uh, uh, you know, some big guys, uh, Adam Polisi, Adam, hopefully you're watching, he's a, he's a purple blood of mine, uh, Oh, he's a big guy, and you should see him. He moves around like, and I, I told him this. He started working on it, at, I think, when he was kind of a, a, a good white belt or relatively new blue belt, that it's, it's very difficult to get through his guard. And I, I don't know, hopefully I'm not overstating this. But he's, Adam's, what, 6'2", 220, 240? Yeah, I think 220. Yeah. So, you know, um, Especially if you have a big guy that has good guard, uh, it's amazing because their top side game gets so much better because they're not afraid if they're guard, if if they uh, if they on top and they see a, an opportunity for submission, they're gonna go for it because they know that worst case scenario they're gonna they're gonna wind up on the bottom. The guy's gonna wind up in their guard, and they're very comfortable using that weapon. So. Um, uh, Jared, I hope that answers your question. I, I know a couple other people had asked um, that question uh, along the way. Um, so I would encourage you to play around with inversions. I think it's going to make your game better. Just be careful. The biggest thing you got to worry about is protect your neck. And usually that's, you know, there's two, you have to turn your head in a way that allows you to, if you have to, just go over in a, in a safe safe manner. That's one. And the second one is, is uh, uh, you know, you always try to protect your neck with the, sh the with the free shoulder. On Instagram, D Walsh asked, "Do you recommend any solo stretching to help with the with the flexibility of uh, inverting?" Yeah, you could, you could. This is probably the single 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 best one. Is just trying to put your feet and then kind of you can walk. Don't be afraid to use your hands, guys. You know. That's probably the single single best one. Uh, you know, make sure you have your arms out for stability. Make sure you use your shoulders. Guys, always the, the weight should be on the shoulders, not on your neck, guys. Just, just really, if you start out with this, be very, very careful and try not to do anything stupid. Um, oh, and yeah, I was gonna make a point, yeah. So guys, understand, one of my favorite sayings, my students will, will know this all the time, Rome was not built in a day, guys. When you train, when you go to a class, you're trying to build a couple of bricks, not the whole Rome. 
if you think you're going to build the role, you're going to be in for a disappointment. And uh, so far we have uh, Frank Canseganis, Christina Ramos, uh, Cosmo, hey guys. Bobby Kletcher, uh watching. And uh, Bobby asked, as far as the arm bar, he says uh, he thinks that you had a better angle and Enrique was just trying to pull his arm out with one hand when we opened. Partial. Partial credit, Bobby. Uh, so let's, are we, do we have any other questions? Yes, and Dave Jocelyn says, uh, thanks for the great instructional. He's saying hello from Connecticut. And he asks, do you think inversion is effective for MMA? Yeah. Sure it is. Because when you're in trouble, guys, it doesn't matter MMA or... Because if, if you're stationary underneath somebody, they could find a way. So even if, if I'm on top, so I pass Enrique's guard, and even if he's framing like, you know, really good, I will find a way to... to so he better invert. Yeah, he better invert. Yeah, this is now changing the dynamics of the game. Okay, let's, let's go for it. It completely changes the dynamics of the game. I, I, I know people have this aversion in MMA to go in, on the bottom. Yes, you should have an aversion go, uh, being on the bottom. But guess what? Sometimes you don't have a choice. Sometimes you wind up on the bottom. If you don't know how to deal with it or you just basically hold out or frame out, it, those those fists will find their way. It's very easy to just swim, hit a couple, and then you go. And now you know things start to go awry. If you invert, if you, uh, look, I mean Ryan Hall. He, by the way, I have the greatest uh, amount of respect for him. He's a great BJJ guy, great MMA guy. It's a shame that more guys don't want to fight him. Look, I mean he's kind of at the pinnacle of of of, of doing that, but you know like he doesn't take punishment. Even though he's on the bottom, I would recommend that for most people because he's so good at it. But there are times when you need to go outside of what, you know, the traditional fundamental Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu or grappling for a, a grappling is. You have to figure out a way to make the, the, make the uh, top guy not find a target. Inversion is a good tool. All right, so let's move on to guillotine defense. So uh, again, I'm, I'm a fan of more sort of uh, active uh, uh, guillotine defense. So anytime I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm, first of all, if I'm shooting on somebody, if I'm coming in, I want, generally speaking, that doesn't give me the same, same level of control or same ability to take somebody down if I have my head on the inside. But I will do that because I gotta, you know, if you look at my neck, <laughs> good luck getting to it, but if you do. <laughs> so, and generally speaking, if I'm coming in, I'm shooting head on the inside. So, that, yes. Oh, I got this one, guys. This is going to go badly for Enrique. I can see it already. So, I'm already shooting head on the, in, uh, head on the inside. Sometimes, I will shoot a head on the outside. So, if I do, I'm immediately thinking... Forget the legs, look at the ceiling, and start to turn. So if my head is on the outside, I will immediately, so even if he wraps, I should try to take it away from him. I forget about the leg, I go to upper body. So that's, that's the number one, prevention is the number one, the best way to, to deal with it. So either head on the inside or Look at the ceiling and start to drive to work the opposite shoulder. So that that's the best way. But sometimes doesn't things don't go according to plan. So when when I feel somebody has a good wrap on my head, what I'll do is I know I can't be Enrique. I cannot I cannot drive. I cannot look at the ceiling. It's just too late. There's too much weight on my head. When that happens, guys. I will swim. What are you going to do now? Okay. <laughs> oh, we go for guillotine for guillotine. So, that's the second most effective way is to swim. Okay? So, you need to get, that's why when you're guillotining somebody, you need to have their head well isolated on the outside. 
Because if he goes inside, you've lost the guillotine. And usually if you lose a guillotine, you will lose position as well. All right? So let's look at it again. So Enriquez, I, I took a bad shot, too much weight. So I, I can't, you know, if I was explosive or if my lip, hips were a little bit underneath me, I could have done something. But they're just too. So I'm going to swing in the middle. And then if I have to, I will fold. Guys, this goes back to MMA. If you make a mistake, uh, you're better off being on the bottom, even if you eat a shot or two, than being choked. Okay? Uh, there was a question on when we put out the video a couple of days ago of me rolling with Enrique and narrating it. Uh, there was a question about at one point, why did I just go down? If I go down, it's because I, I, I smell the danger and I deem it, at, you know, more than adequate. I deem it uh, to be dangerous enough that I'm getting into a position where I can be submitted. I'd rather be down and then be unpredictable on the bottom and create angles. Again, we talked about, it, especially in the guard, you never want to be lined up. You want to be perpendicular. You know, with inversions and with these folds, you're basically constantly creating different angles. So top guy has a hard time finding the target. Eventually, I want to get him back on top or get a submission. But if you're in danger, it's better to go, go down and create a scramble where now he's kind of trying to chase you than sort of like stay on that dangerous path. And that's, uh, you know, that's a judgment call. So you got to deem that danger to be significant enough for you to, to do that. Um, all right, so again, if I, so I get caught, all right, so I'm gonna swim. I, there's no way I'm getting on top, so I'm gonna try to go on the bottom and try to get, get my leg in. So even though I'm on the bottom, I'm already looking for ways to bail out of this. I know Enrique is gonna shove my leg through, so maybe what I'll try to do is come out the other way. I don't have anything, but if he persists with whatever uh, first course of action he had at the beginning, He's going to put himself in danger, so now he has to change most of the line. <laughs> so creating the angles and, and threatening submissions is a good way to get him off you at the very least. If not, you actually put him back on the run. So swimming your head underneath is a great way to, to thwart a guillotine. Do we have any questions on this so far? Right now we have check-ins from Wisconsin, Iowa, Venezuela, New Zealand, wow. and California. Nice. And also, watch, also watching from the Academy, we have Ty, Svi. Hi, guys. Uh, Danny Oliveira. Nice. And... Peter Zawadzki on Facebook as Ah, yeah, Peter. It would not be a, an episode without you asking a good question. He says, uh, talking about guillotine defense, I've got one issue with Von Flew choke. I'm quite successful with it, but I struggle against really big guys who can just bridge and roll me over. If their chest is very big, it elevates my hips and it's hard to sprawl, and my head is already on the side they're throwing me over to. Any tips to stabilize myself for the Von Flew? Yes. We're gonna go over Von Flew. We're gonna go over Von Flew from the side as well as from the guard. Uh, one of the most important thing is your Von Flew is 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 you have your your objective is to get out of the guillotine, not to choke them. So you have to realize that once they get free enough to where they can roll you, you have to say, okay, I'm free from the guillotine. I'm on top of the cross side. I'm gonna take advantage of this now. Okay, so. Let's, we're going to go over that, sort of uh, how, uh, how to deal with bond flu, okay? Now, guys, understand applying a bond flu is much more difficult. It is not impossible, but much more difficult with an arm and guillotine. But right now we're going over defenses against no arm and guillotine, okay? So as he folds, 
I was late. I could not swim my head. Enrique did a good job. What I'm trying to do now is I want to try to jump to top cross side. I'm free now. So Von Flu is what in the U.S. is called the gravy or a cherry on top. Okay? So Von Flu is a bonus basically now. I'm, I'm free. I'm good. Okay? So let's look at it again. So as soon as the guy prevents you from swimming the head inside. So again, we're going how far, guys, by the way, the shorts are back by popular demand. Um, first thing we try to do, shoot with the head inside. If we shoot with the head outside, we try to go to the back. Third is if we cannot, we swim. Fourth, we try to clear our body to the opposite side of our head. Now this is a mistake people do. No, if I'm, if he guillotines me, I want to bomb fool him. So I'm going under his head right now. At this point, Enrique's best course of action is to disengage and, and fight from the bottom of cross side. That's his best course of action. This puts him in, in danger right now. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my right arm up. What I want to do is now I want to prevent him from disengaging that arm. All right, I want to make sure that it's not, I, I want to kind of put it in a, in a way it's either flare out my elbow or flare out my hand. So it gives me a little more, more stability. And I start to sink my weight to my back. Again, the reason for that is so I don't, I don't get rolled. Now my hand goes under and I start to drive. Notice that all my weight is this way. So first, to Piotr's question, I need to make sure that I don't, I don't give him an opportunity, that I don't overdrive. You have to have a lot of weight back here. And that free hand, so the shoulder is blocking his hand from disengaging now. But the free hand is either flared out or elbow flared out, one or the other. It doesn't matter, but it gives you a little bit more stability. But focus on having your weight more in your hips. And you could see that as I'm doing this, I'm gonna sort of, so I'm gonna try to do it a little faster so you can see the adjustment that I make when I get past and when I decide, okay, I'm going for Von Flu, that how I basically sort of start to sink and uh, to make sure, so you see that, that shift, okay? Same side, yeah. Let's go. So you could see how I constantly drove my hips away from him. <laughs> okay, now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lighten up on the trunk. So he has a chance to roll me through. I'm not saying this will never happen. It will happen sometimes if you got somebody big enough and, and explosive enough. They have to bridge, they can't just, I don't care how big the guy is. If he's close to 300 pounds, and if he doesn't break, she's not gonna get me over. So I'm gonna lighten up on it, all right? So. Enrique is not exactly big. <laughs> I'm sorry to break that to you. Uh, we compare notes. Today he's 20 pounds heavier than I am. That's big. Guys, 20 pounds in jiu-jitsu is a rounding error. Okay? So he's got really good movement, so he makes up for his lack of size in that. <laughs> now, that's a compliment. 
Would you rather be a ghoul with no game? There you go. So the point that I'm trying to make is it's going to be difficult, but as I realize I'm getting swept over, I'm, going to, I'm already trying to get my leg in. So I'm going to put him in danger with something else. The other, op or the other possibility is just to let, let the bond flu go. All right, so. Oh, <laughs> what am I going to hit you with? Can anybody, uh, oh, five minutes left, Mike? What happened to 10 minutes? Come on, we need more time. All right, so let me try to speed things up a little bit. So you can disengage the bond flu, and then we're gonna go over what happens. So first, again, I try to make my base really good. So I hang most of my weight towards my hips, flare out my free hand to sort of give myself a little bit more stability. And then when, he, when I start to get lift, I go almost plank out. Now, we're gonna go over again what happens if I get rolled. So I'm looking to bring my leg in. Come on, get on top. So don't stay stabilized, stabilized. Are you gonna keep this? So <laughs> I've learned my lesson. <laughs> so as I'm getting rolled, I'm trying to get my leg back in. So that, that puts me in a very strong guard, even if we land. Don't forget, while the guy's like driving, trying to, you know, all his power is going to turning me over. My sort of attention is going, creating a favorable angle when, I, when he lands in my guard. Does that answer your question? Do we have any, anything, any follow up? Because there's a couple other things I want to do. Yes, we have, uh, we have a few check-ins. We have check-ins from uh, Germany, India, Japan, Taiwan. Nice. And Legacy Channel asked, uh, Mr. Fox, any absolute don'ts when applying the Von Flucho? Yeah, don't, don't, uh, there's, there's, yeah. Don't do any absolutes. I never say never in jiu-jitsu. There's always some oddball thing to do, but when you're applying bon fu choke, so as I'm driving, I try not to give up too much that. Then I try to stay fairly squared up to him, okay? I notice my right hand is kind of floating. So if, if, he, if I feel him like break, you'll know, hold on one second, you'll know if he's gonna try to as his feet start to come up, yeah, I know he's, so I don't know, Mike, can you see this? Your right hand, yes. Okay, so he's here. When he's going to try to drive me over, go. My hand goes up far, and my feet stretch out. Because I know that's when he's trying to, already? I wasn't even choking. I wasn't even trying, guys. I was trying to explain things. <laughs> so... You want to stay square up to him, so only a slight lean, okay? Post your hand, stretch out your legs, and then if you do get swept, look for the leg inside. And Peter Zawatsky asked uh, that recovery arm lock, if you could do it from a different angle. Okay, I forget. Oh, all right, so where are you going? Maybe not going there, so. <laughs> I actually got something else, but it's just as good. The, the idea remains the same. I'm trying to put him in a guard, and now he's going to get reverse triangle choke. Uh, there was one other thing I wanted to do with the monk school. I forgot what it was. <laughs> Yeah, guys, this happens to be, so all my students already know 
this is like a regular class. When I have an idea in my head, 30 seconds later, it's gone. It has something to do with Von Kluge. Now let's do it again, just hopefully it'll come to me. <laughs> oh, Armin. Oh, yes. See, this is why I keep him around. Armin Guillotine. Yes. So let's do that. Uh, no. I'll run from this. This is more important. So, guys, um, Enrique goes for an Armin Guillotine. All right? As he's going. I'm clearing, right? So now, I don't have one flu. And I, because I can't get my left arm out. What I'm gonna do is, is bring my leg in. Okay? This is very important, because this is what I was talking about. Arming guillotine, much, much harder to von flu somebody. But it is not impossible, all right? Involve flu people even, even with an arm in it, just it's a little bit more work. Uh, Dave Jocelyn says, Enrique, thanks for letting Fox demonstrate on you for us. <laughs> <laughs> it's time. It's time. Any last minute questions? Let me double check. I know some parts of the world it's quite late. Uh, Dave Jocelyn asked to see how you freed your arm one more time. And Hale Vuong asked, how do you finish the arm and guillotine? Uh, look at the episode. <laughs> look at the episode 19. 19 it is? Yes. Look at episode 19. <laughs> yeah. There's a bonus at the end. <laughs> One way to escape the guillotine. Yeah. Yeah, I know guys, some of you asked, like, how do you escape a fully locked in guillotine? There's basically two ways to do it. Tap, or go out in the blaze of glory. <laughs> Look at us in episode 19. And on Instagram, Talha asked, uh, does your knee have to be on the bicep to free the arm? Are you no, you, you try to strip the elbow. Basically, what you try to do is just pin his elbow, wedge his elbow, to the ground so you can pull your arm out without obstruction. And last question, Dustin Williamson asked, uh, why do you guillotine with your left arm only? Oh, guys, that is an excellent question. That is an excellent question. And by the way, that's why I usually wrap my left arm because I know a lot of people ask me, what's wrong with this hand? I'll tell you what's wrong with my hand. Too many guillotines. Uh, so, guys, this is an excellent question. I have students who have a great right-handed guillotine, but fight MMA and, generally speaking, stand left leg forward. Do you think if I'm, if I have a good right-handed guillotine and I stand left leg forward, how many times will I get a chance to use my right-handed skill, right-handed guillotine skill, in a fight? Possibly never. So if you, unless you're ambidextrous, if you stand left leg forward, which hand should be your good, good, good guillotine? It's wrap, guys. So it, you should have. You should know. <laughs> I already gave you the answer. If I stand, if I'm southpaw, this should be your good guillotine. So I encourage you to work your guillotines on the same side that you stand forward. 
Grappling, if I'm standing grappling left leg forward, same thing. Grappling, if I stand right, right leg forward, your, your right-handed guillotine should be the strong one, okay? So that's an excellent question, guys. Um, I did have one other point to make, but I could not remember what it is. Um, so in the, so <laughs> we'll call it a day. Well, we'll call it a morning for us. Some of you guys, guys, have a good night. Some of you guys have a good afternoon. For some of you guys, have a good morning. Have a good weekend. And we're on back, back again tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. Guys, episode 30. I want to know who's in the 30 club, all right? Could be live, could be after, but as long as you're in the 30 club, guys, we'll see you tomorrow. Stay well, stay safe, and take care of others, guys, all right? See you later.